Irene's search for a home leads us to a hometown in Mwingi. Early on Tuesday morning, we return to the center and together, we embarked on a home tracing mission to see if we'll find any family member who can hopefully take these sisters and give them a home. We are now on the road to Nzalai village, the home of the children's father and grandfather, with the hope of a reconciliation. The journey is long and unrelenting. A few wrong turns and luckily a break later, we're here in Zalai village in Mwingi, a place that looks deserted. Irene seems to remember quite a lot about this place as she reminisces on their stay here. Not long after, the grandfather, Mwandekwa Iruka, surprisingly appears warmly welcoming us strangers. He says he recognizes one child, claiming that their mother only had one child with his son. He further asserts that all that is now in the past, especially since the couple did not formalize their union traditionally and seemingly sought to separate. After separating other chiefs, he claims the mother went with the children and speaking on behalf of his son, he has this to say. The prospects of any of these children's relatives taking parental responsibility is dying by the minute. It appears not to lie with the separated parents and their grandfather. Wandekwa does not acknowledge them as family because his son never formalized his union with the girl's mother. After nine months of an endless search for their mother, now their only hope of a home has been crushed. Because according to their tradition, after separation, the children belong with their mother, who unfortunately up to now has not been traced. So question is, what then is the fate of these children and the many others out there who have been abandoned by their own flesh and blood. With that disappointment, we start the journey back to Nairobi, only to meet their father on the way back. He seems eager to meet the girls who also appeared excited, yet subdued. Their father is initially reluctant to speak in the presence of our cameras, but after prodding. What about the likelihood of a reconciliation and a reunion? A whole day has been spent tracing the girls home, a home from which they have been turned away, with only a little spark of hope from their father for a possible reconciliation. This, apparently yet another normal day in the lives of these desperate, tired children. The question now is what next? What we have decided is that the family, the two families, the paternal and the maternal family, should have a meeting. This we usually call it the, the family group discussion meeting conference, yeah, where both families will sit down and then they come with a way forward. So back in Nairobi, our concerns about what these children had gone through take us to the office of one of the very few child psychologists in the market, Catherine Bao. First uh, thing that the kids will experience is loss, abandonment and rejection. However, people don't know how it's exhibited. This rejection goes deeper than most would imagine. The trauma that this child has is trauma to do with rejection or almost like somebody who's grieving a loved one. This is a child that will always have problems with uh, belonging. If they are the clingy sort, then they fear losing another loved one. If they are isolated, then they'd rather not get close to avoid any future disappointment. Some of the traits these children portray are immediate giveaways that help is required. If it's zero to nine months or near, more touch, more eye contact, to establish security for the kids, consistency for the children. But will they ever make a full recovery? Not only God can tell, but psychology says uh, we all have no more healing patterns. Yeah? Some will take longer, some will take a shorter period. 
The rise in the number of cases of missing children takes us to Vigilance House, the police headquarters, where Deputy Police Spokesperson Oweno Wahongo tells us the magnitude of such cases in the country. You know, as population increases of the country, cases increases. What is most important to us is how do you manage uh, the situations. I can say that we have managed the situations very well, but also because of awareness and since the inception of the Children's Act, I think people have become more aware, uh, the offence bracket has been widened and therefore nobody wants to make a mistake and uh, the cases are becoming a bit minimal. Children are lost every single day. As a Good Samaritan, what you can do is report to the nearest police station, for here is where the tracing process begins. Grace and Salame are the police headquarters, Nairobi.